That's what I'm talking about. You should page through and look at, because I think you'd like some of these ads. And New greaseless way to keep your hair neat all day. My grandfather used to put grease in his hair. How many times has this happened to you? Oh man, my granddaddy could talk. <laughs> he put no, pig's grease in his hair. So, was that the same title that's on the article? It is not. The Unknown Grand Canyon. But it is like hidden wonder. So hidden wonder, unknown. I mean, they're all you're splitting hairs here. It's true. In the table of content, it's not a cover story. Mm -mm. We should note that. So this is no. May 14, 1956. Life magazine. Life magazine. Not a cover story. What is story. the cover story though? Someone is anti-communist. Henry Wallace tells why he's anti-red and pro-Ike. Pro mm -hmm. A guide for draft age men. <laughs> oh, God. Which is interesting because this is after World War One, after mm -hmm. World War Two, 1956. Mm -hmm. And what would have been the next? I mean, Vietnam's going to come, but not yet. Korea? Korea. Korea is what mm -hmm. just happened. So, yeah, they're like getting more amped up on anti-communist sentiment because of their success with Korea. Did we have any deployments anywhere? Was there any like engagement? Like, is this is this when they started going into South America or? Well, I mean, there's probably a lot of occupation with East and West Berlin. That's probably what it is, is ramping up. Sure. Yeah, you got to be over there. We're and then, that fight. We're getting a sense of the year 1956. I'm Crocky. I'm Ricky. And I'm Lucy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I was about so to be dumb. like, what happened in 1956? <laughs> so the reason we're pulling up this Life magazine is because it has an article about the Grand Canyon. This is 1956, but this is before a major event. What what happens at Grand Canyon in 1956? 1956. Oh, there's a plane crash. There's a major mm -hmm. airline collision. But that is going to happen oh. just a couple weeks after this article comes out. That's oh, in, June that in June 1956. So mm -hmm. very interesting that they released this article. It's it, in the table of contents. It's the unknown Grand Canyon. Oh, dang. And wow. then when we flip to it, it's the Grand Canyon's hidden wonders. So yeah, we're just kind of getting Man. a sense of 1956. Um, this is kind of the beginnings of Elvis. Elvis has his first um, chart topping song. Which in 1956. one? 1956. This would have been Heartbreak Hotel. Well, dang, oh. that's and a start. First appearance on Ed Sullivan, 1956. Mm. So you got lots of plate spinners and then Elvis just comes on the scene. 1956 is also the first Eurovision song contest. Ooh. Ooh. Eurovision. <laughs> what, uh, do we know who won? I, I don't, don't know. Was it Iceland? Can, yeah, Did Iceland win? I don't win? know if you can pull it up. I need to know. I think, uh, I think we need to hear what the 1956 Eurovision yeah. song Eurovision. winner sounds like. You, you think it's that. like some Perry Cuomo sounding thing? Oh, or I like mean, total. Well, I mean, Like a yeah. big band or like if or it's pre-Elvis. Rock and roll is a big thing. So Chuck Berry, maybe some you know, like and, um, Icelandic Johnny Cash, Chuck Berry. All these guys are around. So yeah, it's kind of like the beginnings of rock and roll. It took place. Um, Eurovision took place in Switzerland. Who's the Swiss Chuck Berry? Oh my God, there is no Chuck Berry. <laughs> I don't do that there. Also, I, 1956, an IBM computer weighed one ton. Oh my God. And was 16 cubic feet. Jesus Christ. Jeez. The first person she to win Eurovision was Lise Asya. Hmm. She was what a... What was the name of our song? She was a Swiss person. And she's a hot babe. She's got a little dynamite going on. Hmm. And uh, her song was called uh, Switzerland. <laughs> I swear to God, that's what it says. A little bit of an inherent bias there. <laughs> Switzerland putting on the pageant and then declaring themselves winners. It's sort of like American sports. Like you were the only ones that do like gridiron football and we're like the world champion. Yes, the one, the American team that plays exclusively in America. It's true. For American audiences we're the is world the world champion. champions. Absolutely. That's how you rock it. 
All right, I'm gonna wrangle this horse a little bit. Mm. So the article dives into the Grand Canyon. You should say wrangle a mule. No, I was gonna say, I'm just That's staring uh, at a on. picture of a mule going down the stare, BA. At, staring you in the face. This is, so that photo right there, that shows our, um, our, our, you know, our guide, maybe, our photographer. Uh, they only call him Owen. They don't ever give a last name, but they say photographer Owen. I believe it's his last name. Oh yeah, A-Y, A -Y Owen. Owen. So we don't know who Let's, A is. Let's speculate on what the A-Y stands for. Aloysius Yancey Owen. I was gonna say Adam Yates Owen. Oh, Adam Yates. <laughs> Owen it, spent nearly three months in <laughs> exploration. He traveled 2,000 miles by car, more than 300 miles by horseback, muleback. I've never heard that. Muleback. I mean, you would. It's true. Muleback. It's, a, it's a fun drink that you do mule. get at Grand Canyon uh, dude, bars. They should have a muleback. A muleback. What is a muleback? Yeah, the El Tavar. Right? Good. Good a little drink. Moscow muleback. A little, yeah, a little, a little Moscow muleback. Mm. What would you like? It would be like a mezcal meal back. Uh, oh, you know, yeah, you know, it would be a mezcal. You gotta hit it with that with that mm. spice because you're in the Southwest. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's a prickly pear juice. Oh, bam! With it, you know. Yeah, you hit Just it. Just gonna invest fully into the Southwestern vibe. I'll, I'll have some like of that. It, you know? Yeah. I'll have some we'll, cheese. We'll, uh, we're gonna open. Post COVID, we're gonna open a Grand Canyon bar. Look, why yeah. wait? Why wait? Let's just Grand do it on theme bar. Let's just I, do it on Drizzly. People are gonna sit around the Horseshoe Mesa. Ooh. It's gonna be the actual bar. It's gonna be shaped like a horseshoe. That would be it's gonna so be very, awesome. very minimalist. Just called Saloon. Saloon. I want it. And, and it's he, just a red neon light. And it should it just have says, swingy doors to approach. Swingy doors the only into the bathroom. Ooh, Nowhere else. Actually, that's thing. smarter. Because mm, then you it's don't cold. need. It's cold. Yeah. Flag stuff. It's yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah. um, this first section of the article claims. Uh, there's a quote. By all records, this was one of the most extensive, continuous explorations in the canyon ever made. A continuous exploration. It's a bold mm. statement, but they're saying by all records. So from whatever these authors could find, this seemed to be the most extensive, continuous exploration in the canyon. Wow. Mm. And it sounds about right. You know, you had the Cole brothers doing a lot of film and photography uh, 19 teens, 1920s. You do have um, guys like uh, um, Harvey uh, Buchart. Buchart. <laughs> Harvey Buchart. Thank you. Herb Buchart. Herb. He's the, the guy who wrote He's the things. one who started writing hiking guides. Um, not Colin Fletcher. Colin Fletcher's the man who walked through time. Um, you keep his name out your mouth. It's not that Colin <laughs> Fletcher. I will I'm just going to note right Another... here that I, I've invited Ricky into this. Ricky has not hiked, <laughs> has not hiked Grand Canyon, so he's going to be a fun uh, outside person. I went to it once when I was 14 or 15, and that is the extent of my Grand Canyon experience. Um, what did you throw in? I didn't throw... Um, Proud of maybe you. Maybe dreams. Oh, good. Um, nice save. <laughs> aspirations. Uh, As you should. Maybe, you know, 14, 15 year old me, I just threw in, I threw in my bullshit and I, I left like it, it there. I like it. Keep you know? it. It wants it. Yeah. And then it will take it and make it something beautiful. And then it's I returned to Phoenix does. Reborn. Mm. Mm. Much like the namesake of the city. Oh, rising. Found Phoenix. myself. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, am, I am inspired. Mm. Mm -hmm. Much we, like Owen was inspired by the natural landscapes. Yeah, way to bring uh, it back which around. Which we've got yes, an actual, but... is this a self-portrait here or is this his guide? Well, he could have maybe set a timer, but that is interesting. This we, is We him. get a photo of our, um, our photographer. Owen, he's Mr. Seeking, Owen. He's seeking relief. And he's in he's feet. in the Kanab Creek right here. Yeah. So he's been hiking off the north rim, it seems, that he's trying to go off the beaten track. He's not doing the south rim trails in this. So yeah, he's down in Kanab Creek. Um, we've got these beautiful, beautiful photographs. Uh, I saw something about this being called shower bath rock. 
That's nice. That's... Who doesn't want that? God, line uh... me up. A little shower mm -hmm. rock, with, mm -hmm. and it's all coming out of the rock, dripping down. So it's a profuse dripping spring. Like a shower. Would. It's a sh it's like yeah. a shower. It's like your natural bucket shower fun. Listener, visualize this. Yeah. A shower. I want a shower a that rock. comes out of the rock. That's incredible. It's like a filter. It's filtration. Now, these are probably the most interesting photos in the whole article mm -hmm. um, to a Grand Canyon nerd like myself. Is This is an arch, and the first time I saw that, I was like, oh arches they rope that into exactly. to grand canyon no that is in the grand canyon is it's, it still there currently or has it, it been eroded by time it is but yeah it's one of these things it, it's you know either called an arch or a natural land bridge um, and i think the technicality comes in the way it was formed so water was flowing under it so it would be called a natural land bridge now it is still there but with these things we never know when they're going to collapse. Eventually they mm -hmm. are going to collapse. That's that seems like a pessimistic view to take. <laughs> I'm being realistic. It's what happens in life. A stalag might, might, it might reach the ceiling. A stalag tight hangs on tight from the ceiling. <laughs> ba boom. <laughs> And this this bridge, it really does look like the Rainbow Bridge in um, in the Navajo a, Nation. Yeah, a bit a bit smaller and mm -hmm. not quite as smooth. It's really impressive. So you get you get two shots. So they're showing you how obviously okay, yes, it is a natural bridge, but they're showing you how you might not even notice you might, it. Yeah. There. And now the story is that this was not even discovered till 1951. Dang. Nobody noticed this. Now, this is also one of those like white person claiming they discovered it when in reality, probably Native Americans have seen this for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. But um, our, our um, person who discovered it was none other than Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater. Barry Goldwater. 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 Barry found this. I don't know Barry Goldwater's whole story. I don't want to get too political on it. He likes bombs. Um, but um, <laughs> the, yeah, the reality is he is known as somebody, right, who who bombs things, pushed the um, conservative. <laughs> what was his motivation? Why did why did he want to become um, more conservative and and his motivation? What's his motivation? I well, don't know, I, I don't know particularly what his motivation was. I just know that he's because, sort of okay, like okay. Eisenhower is president right now, 1956. Right. And we're having this like big uh, anti-communist, anti-red yeah. movement. He was a super anti-communist kind of guy. And he had a lot of stuff named after him. There's a reservoir named after him in southern Arizona somewhere. Maybe Phoenix probably. I don't know. But this is like Pax Americana. Like this is like the height of the American, the no, so-called American dream. Or like just a little bit into its like first decline. Because you're having like... That post-war boom economy is starting to shrink slightly, and they got to figure out a way to keep that military-industrial complex going. So this is like the CIA coming into its own. This is like we got to start. We got to fight them everywhere so they don't come here. Communism is now the new enemy right. to keep the so machine going. Relatable, relatable topics of kind of. Um, I mean, we we can't know what somebody like our current age, what that was going through their mind to be alive in 1956, right? Is this it's, duck and cover period? It is. is. This like Barry Goldwater, like it's the most the the most famous thing about him was, and I'm making sure to look it up. Like Lyndon B. Johnson was going for. Uh, you know, like re-election and such. Uh, and he won in a landslide victory over Barry Goldwater because of this very famous ad commercial that happened called the Daisy commercial. And it's basically like this, this little girl is playing with flowers and then all of a sudden, like, if you vote for Barry Goldwater, like, um, all of this is going to happen. And then all these bombs come out of who nowhere made, who and is, bombed Who was he girl. running against? This uh, is, you're talking LBJ. presidential. Yeah, LBJ. He, so he ran Lord. for president. What year did he run for president? It was president? the 1964 election. All right, so, so that didn't back. happen yet. Yeah. But, we're, but this we're is what Barry's in. famous for, is what I'm right, saying. Right, right. I got it. I appreciate it. But so he is. Still, but we got to, yeah. Way pre we got to take that. it back. Oh, yeah. Um, this is compassionate this conservative. Is, this is Barry still Goldwater. Cowboy Barry. Yeah, so this <laughs> is know? Cowboy so Barry. What triggers he's, him to go that way? He's flying through the Grand Canyon. Now, we also. 
you got to realize that flight restrictions, because we already mentioned there's going to be an airline disaster in a few weeks after this article is released. Yeah. The Grand Canyon is 9-11. Like, is about to happen. The, it's true. Yeah, the biggest airline disaster in... And causes the FAA um, to be... Or, or I should say com commercial, not you know, not commercial involving flight. war. Yeah. Um, but the biggest yeah, airline disaster on People record. People could fly into the Grand Canyon and do whatever, so it makes so sense. So he's flying through, but he said he was on his way to Navajo Mountain, mm. which mm. is... Today we know Navajo Mountain. It's a sacred mountain, mm -hmm. um, but it's on the edge of Lake Powell. Mm -hmm. This is pre-Lake Powell. Lake Powell, they oh don't my even, God, it is. they don't even begin work on the Glen Canyon Dam Holy till cow. 1956. Oh. So oh there is no Lake Powell yet. There is no Glen Canyon Dam yet. It's so Lake Powell's Glen a Canyon. reservoir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will be. Yeah, it will be. Um, now he discovered it. He said he was flying and he noticed mm. it from the air, but he could not confirm it until he actually got down in there. And it took him three years Good to Lord. actually get down in there. I believe it. That's it only so took our difficult. Owen guy three months. <laughs> water. I mean, that's politicians for you. I can't believe he eyeballed this from the air because it really does. It like yeah. it can well, be well, people difficult. Thought, some people thought he was crazy. Yeah, they're, they're like, oh no, 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 you didn't, you didn't see it. Uh, there's no natural How bridges can you see in the a Grand bridge? Canyon. I guess he, yeah, in the article he says he saw like a weird shadow play. That's why. From the angle yeah. he was flying. Hawkeye. So Hawkeye then Barry. he gets he gets somebody to fly. Except electoral victories. <laughs> somebody flies a helicopter uh, down to Nankoweep Creek. So today, if you want to go see this, you hike Nankoweep Trail, mm -hmm. Nankoweep Trailhead. Um, but somebody took him by helicopter down in there, which again, you could still do that back then. And then he saw it in person, uh, so 1954 confirmed that this was a real natural bridge in the Grand Canyon. That's amazing. Hmm. There's so many things. They believe the span is about 147 feet. Nobody's walked at the check. You can. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that up to you, Ricky. Right, you go ahead. <laughs> Get me Mr. Born again. People. <laughs> Rise, Phoenix rising. I levitated at the Grand Canyon. Um, he has, Owen has a, a couple guides, and he says he brought a climber named Otto von Allman. I tried looking this guy up. I couldn't find anything on Otto von Allman. He's a ghost. If, if yeah. anybody watching, you know, if you know, if you're a Grand Canyon nerd, and you, maybe you know who this early Grand Canyon climber was um let us know in the comments because yeah i couldn't couldn't find him i wonder if that's like barry goldwater's yeah. pseudonym for like auto when... van Almond. <laughs> it, it, that's it a would, fake name it would make sense one. because it, <laughs> it was like, oh a i big, totally brought a guy <laughs> it was an arizona highways article mm. that that um uncovered the the natural land bridge so it was arizona highways and then life magazine is a nationwide publication right. so, so they picked it up exactly i think i think that's what this article is really all about cool. is this image and um so yeah something to note too is life magazine was started in 1883 it ran till about 1972 and Dang. then then they started cutting it back it technically ran till the year 2000 but at that it point it became a quarterly right or like an yeah, annual yeah they cut it it was weekly and monthly and they started it was 1972 they started cutting back why did people uh, stop reading people same thing they tell us every couple of years print is dead it's the internet <laughs> thanks now, internet one of the first um or, or the very first uh mm. um literary editor of life magazine was a guy named edward sanford martin dang and he was one of the founders of the harvard lampoon so this guy's, you know, living turn of century, 1800s to 1900s. So they pull him from Harvard to help start Life magazine. But 1970, Harvard has a spinoff of the Harvard Lampoon called The National Lampoon. I'm about to say, what, what is a lampoon? I only know lampoon Animal is like House Lampoons. mocking, right? Yeah, when I don't you know. lampoon something, it's like you're making fun of it or mocking it. Well, The National Lampoon was a comedy, but I think The Harvard Lampoon was a regular 
I don't know if somebody can get on this. Look it up. I, the only lampoon. thing I know is harpooning. Um, that's all I'm thinking. So, of. so National <laughs> Lampoon, 1970. That they're like jumping in the whole comedy wave, and uh, John Hughes had actually been going to the University of Arizona, hmm. Tucson. So uh, John Hughes was in school in Tucson. He drops out. He becomes a comedy writer. And in the mid 70s, he's hanging out in New York City. He then starts writing for National Lampoon. He writes a little story um, for a 1979 National Lampoon that was called Vacation 58. Oh my about his childhood going on vacations, and it does mention Grand Canyon. And it's true, Lampoon is publicly to criticize by using ridicule, irony, and sarcasm. Mm. That's a mockery, exactly. And Horror Lampoon was a kind of horror, not horror, I keep wanting to say harpooning. Yeah. Because like, it's just instantly- Well, I mean, that is kind of, I feel like fishing that's- for jokes. <laughs> the, the action of a, of a comedy magazine is to make uh, stabs at uh, critique. And, and of course, Harvard has that kind of know-how to make humor in a collegiate way and make it all- Stuffy. Stuffy and, and intelligent, because you need brains to be funny. Do you? I, I'm not... A little man named brains. Dan Whitney, a.k.a. Larry the Cable Guy, hey. that... <laughs> Point made. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, Every hey. couple of years, there's somebody... Every couple he, of years, you get your makes, Jeff Dunham's and your... He makes a good uh, beer bread, I tell you. I, I don't know. Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy? <laughs> Which one? Uh, Larry the Cable Larry Guy? Larry the Cable Guy. He's got some real good cable food. The, the bread guy. Mm -hmm. How come he hasn't gone into like a Guy Fieri style? Like, he could. He could easily storm the South. Why with, couldn't? Yeah, yeah. Where's the Larry the Cable Guy restaurant or like he, franchised can. like fast food? <laughs> like if, if Shaq can open oh, like open a, a chicken sandwich restaurant, uh, dude, in Glendale in he California. He did that. Yeah, yeah. Larry could easily. Why can't Larry make the Cable Guy do? Like yeah. some Texas toast, beer bread, like kind of stuff, Dude, like sandwiches, biscuits. He could, he could own the Texas toast world for sure. Yeah. And and like have his own syrup, definitely. What do you think syrup. like a signature sandwich at a Larry the Cable Guy restaurant would be? Bacon. Bacon with what? Bacon. Just like a bacon, <laughs> like a, a bacon, like a BLT, it, it would it's almost bacon be lard. Like when you go to KFC and you get the double down, you know, it would be like two chickens with like meat sauce and bacon in the Ooh, inside. Okay. It that's my that's Ooh, my layer of the cable. He does a reverse mm. where it's the chicken and the bacon chicken sandwich patties. Bacon inside, Wrap it in and bacon. then the meat is his beer bread. Dude, and you smash it all together. This. We should, why are we not talking? What are Do you we think doing? he's doing talk? We, we gotta, you know, we gotta, we gotta take a break. Um, we got a word from our, our sponsors. Um, Larry the Cable Book Guy Restaurants uh, is sponsoring the podcast. What do you think it's, what do you think that restaurant's called? Oh man. It's, 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 you know, it'll be something, something get her, nice and. Get her dinner. Get her dinner. Get her done. Oh, like man. it's gotta be something on get her done. Done or dinner. Eat her done. Oh man. Some Crocky, I got dinner you know, done. Dinner, dinner done. Dinner done. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. Because you don't have dinner to cook. Done. You don't have to cook it. Dinner, dinner done. done. Dinner done. Dude. That, dinner okay. done. Somebody right. needs to pitch this. All right, y'all. To homie. All right. Two crazy chickens. Talking about two chickens. Hey. Um, I'm bringing <laughs> this back. Y'all ever heard about two chickens? <laughs> <laughs> Oasis of life in harsh land. He's got some beautiful photographs here of the flowers, the aspen trees, the monkey flowers, and a species of squirrel that is only found Underwater. on the north side. <laughs> okay. I'm leaving all this in. All it uh, looks like it's underwater. It's an underwater shot. The Kaibab squirrel, only found on the north rim of the Grand Canyon because the north rim of the Grand Canyon is like an isolated island, right? Once you go off the edge, it's a whole different ecosystem. And there's you go monkeys. Too far north, the ecosystem changes. Do you think that has something to do with uh, Barry Goldwater not sharing the locations of the land bridges so the squirrels could get to the south room? Dude, maybe? secrets. Yeah. 
Yeah, that They're was their place. way. That was <laughs> there was one bridge left <laughs> for the the kaiba. Yeah, any kai any squirrel that made it across became the in the hip club, the yeah. kaiba squirrel club. But if they didn't make it across the land bridges, that's how, you you bring up um, you stir up a lot of imagination because there would have been periods in, of time where well, there could have been well there could have been a land bridge that spanned the Colorado River. Yeah. That yeah. we don't know about. Sure. It just collapsed over yeah. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's where some of like these pockets of native only to certain parts came from. Where are these monkey trees at? That, those are called monkey flowers. Why are they there? Why you, do they look like monkeys? You've seen these, right? The, Probably. The, if you camp at Hermit Creek, oh. you'll see a bunch of those. Why are they monkeys? They're monkey flowers. Are there ancient monkeys in the canyon? Do you think there were monkeys in the canyon at one point? I mean, there were ancient horses and goats. Well, the, the ringtails, to me, the ringtails seem a lot like a marsupial. Ooh. They're, Wait, aren't they a marsupial? What's a raccoon? Isn't a raccoon I think they're marsupial? in the raccoon No. No. Not a marsupial. Okay. I believe they're in the raccoon They family, are raccoon. But I don't know. All right, so talking about <laughs> animals, the, the article here, this is a quote, Animal life in Grand Canyon also includes about 180 species of birds, 25 species of reptiles, and five amphibians. Dinner done. Dinner done, y'all. Yeah. Literally, literally, Lucy's dinner is done in the other it's room. It's true. My acorn um, squash is finished. But mm -hmm. uh, let me, let me. Um, you are good. Let me compare this real quick. Mm -hmm. So this article, 1956, says those numbers: 180 species of birds, 25 species of reptiles five species of amphibians. Today we know, these are the numbers from the park website. Today we know 450 species of Ew. birds. Whoa. There's actually 58 species of reptiles and amphibians combined. So it is something we're exploring this canyon. Mm -hmm. There could be a, a species nobody's found yet. Dude, Grand I heard canyon there were headless scorpions in what, a cave. What? I heard there were headless scorpions in the Cave of the Dones because they don't need eyeballs because it's a cave and they don't need to have any sight, so they have no head. Uh, viewers, <laughs> comment below if you've seen mm -hmm. a headless scorpion. <laughs> a sighting of a headless scorpion. <laughs> now, there's one thing they do mention when they're talking about the, the wildlife here is they mentioned that uh, Cliff Rose is a staple for the mule deer because they can eat Cliff Rose in the winter time when a lot of the other plants start dying out. Of course, deer are um, herbivores. Now, a, a claim that this article makes is that um, if the deer don't eat enough cliff rose, they can have a miscarriage. Whoa! And it's a very interesting claim, and I tried huh. digging up, and I found nothing on it. That sounds uh, controversial. Yeah. Yeah, it, it basically <laughs> was saying, like, the cliff rose is essential for having a healthy... Baby. Deer. That feels like a lot of hype from Big Cliff Rose. It does. Trying to get. I think that's a big. You know, deer. Cliff Rose trying to sell them. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to hype well, these deer. Every plant. Every plant is trying to outlive the other plants. So <laughs> it's kind of like when they hype up, they're like, "Oh, you got to eat more flaxseed." It's true. Yeah. It's just some farmer somewhere. I saw something trying to today sell where they were like. Seed. And hey, then, guess what? Coffee actually hydrates you. Right. And, and I was then like, a month what? Month later, they're gonna say something different, man. I don't know. This sounds like a lot of political. Mm. It's just a. Uh, Ooh, look at these darling people from the 1950s. I would love to own a, a trench Cadillac. coat. And a no, I don't want that guy. <laughs> like, I want to have a Cartier trench coat. Ooh, they're in front of a Cartier. The final claim of the article is talking about mm. the river. And uh, so, you know, viewer, listener, we're, we're just kind of diving into this magazine now. I just... Uh, Lucy, Lucy's I finding just the Cadillac ad. I love old fucking ads. I, just, I do. <laughs> They're so... I mean, who were we back then? I mean, look at these, like... Like pink stripers and candy stripers, that's what they're called. And like all pink these, stripers. I don't know. I just see a giant pink boat of a car. Look yeah. at that. You could put like 15 people in that Cadillac, man. Now, while you guys are checking out these ads, oh I just want to, I just want to button up the actual article. Uh, the last quote in there is, on average, the river carries a million tons of sand, mud, and silt out of the Grand Canyon 
every 24 hours. Good God. Whoa. And that's an interesting claim because at this point, the Hoover Dam does exist. So it's not actually being carried out. That means that it's just dumping behind the Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam was built 1931 and 1936. So it's a weird number. And even today, I, I don't think you can fully measure that because now the Glen Canyon Dam exists mm -hmm. and the silt and mud gets stuck behind that. Yeah. They do release like the floodgates and let the silt and mud sure. through. And that is a the thing they found that when there was a dam on either end of the canyon, without silt and mud coming in, any beaches that were in the canyon would just erode away. Mm -hmm. You need to have an inflow outflow for the beaches to stick around. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, somebody out there can comment if they know the actual, um, flow of, uh, silt through the Grand Canyon in a 24 hour period. I think a million tons in 24 hours sounds pretty crazy. It does, it's a lot of dirt, man. I mean, it is pretty muddy. Yeah, we need an it's answer on river. this. Well. Um, frankly, <laughs> I mean, we're all, I mean, all three of us, Mine's we were, we were up late into the night last night discussing Cracking silt, silt flow, inflow, outflow. Real silt heads up here. Um, <laughs> and we just, we need to have that answer. So if somebody could please provide that for us, or at least put us in touch with somebody who I want to know. give us the concrete facts. It's driving us insane. Where's and the opposite Grand Canyon? Where's the dirt? Where's the dirt, y'all? It's in the Gulf of California. It is. That's not really a mystery. No. You can look at the bottom of the Gulf of California and mm -hmm. you can see the type of rock that's down there. It's what and separated the Salton Sea from the Gulf of California. But that did that would come up often on tours. Mm -hmm. What is people would say? Where's where, the dirt? Where did it all go? If this is what you're saying, then where did all the dirt go? <laughs> I don't know. So what's it doing Funny. down at the? What's it doing down at the Gulf of California? It's you know. It's just chilling. It's chilling, just, uh, it's just taking the sun, man. Out. You know. All right. It's just well, it's a very, it's a, it's a fertile land. What do they call that down there? The, um, the, the Coachella, where Coachella uh, takes place. Uh, Anza Borrego, um, Salton Sea. Isn't that like the Coachella land where there's all yeah. that, the, the. Imperial sand dunes and Algondones dunes. Yeah, those are sand dunes, but there's mm. a name for like the farming area. Cause yeah, that's basically uh, how, a, that's a huge portion of America's food. Comes that's what I was yeah. going to say. Oh, like this is. We are figuring this out in the moment. Mexicali. The reason that California has such a huge produce economy is because of the silt from the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah. It came at all the minerals. Limestone has calcium. Mm -hmm. The, um, what is it? The uh, mudstone, the, the shale, you know, has iron in it. So all these minerals came, made that soil so yeah. rich. So California is indebted to the Grand Canyon. We all are indebted to the Grand Canyon. Libby's Hawaiian sliced pineapples are indebted to the Grand Canyon. I'm glad you got that ad in before I can't we had stand our beautiful it. ending. It was moment. good. Like, it just it just this. shows it, it shows what's important to each of us. Libby's. <laughs> look at Libby's face. Easy ecology. Do. Look at Libby's ecology, face. Ecology commerce. Libby's new easy do. Some, well, she's she knows how to you know I, entertain at a dinner get party. Back, get over I've to her. I've never liked this fruit cocktail jelly thing. That was a big fifties. Oh, God, I don't. My all grandma right, used to make that uh, for me all the time. Let's look at a few time, ads dude. and then we'll wrap this thing up. Oh, look at that fridge! Oh my God! Tell them what we're looking at. You got a giant fridge from the fifties where you. I mean, it's it's. Well, it's, I mean, let's give the copy its due up here, Lucy. Now, all in one, a full size. 6.8 cubic feet freezer plus a full size <laughs> nine foot cubic foot refrigerator. Add them together. Huh? The Philco Supermarketer. That's our fridge. Good God, this fridge is. Oh, do we get a price? This price is, point? Do we have a price? Um, this is a we do have the size, daddy. so this is a good comparison. So at this point, you know, a refrigerator, and it looks like the same size as a refrigerator $229 today. $229.95. In 1954. Good God, that's at least, a, like, at least $1,000. No. More now, than that, uh, Yeah, 1500 right? 2000 The size is 10, or sorry, 15.8 15 square. So that, that was the size of an IBM. That's a meat locker. An IBM computer <laughs> was the size of a refrigerator Good and weighed Lord. a ton <laughs> in 1956. Oh, 
God, I mean, like, look at all that butter. Why do they freeze their butter? I'm thinking that might be the freezer. Yeah, like what? Well, so we started out with the freezer on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Then some enterprising company moved it to the top. And now it's hip again to have the freezer at the bottom. Weird. Trends. Trends, man. Trends. You got to keep your cheese. Trends. Keep, oh, look at that. There's like the that. one I was talking about earlier. Canned grapefruit with Sections. shrimp. So it's chopped grapefruit. What? Oh chopped my God. grapefruit in a can, meaning you know that that is just getting pulverized to shit. It's disgusting. The longer that sits on a shell. <laughs> Delicious, just Imagine as they just come from the can. can Delightful and salads for health. For health. For, it's for health. You're gonna eat your your shrimp That's with some Steve Brule stuff. God, for it's disgusting. Health. It's unforbidden fruit. <laughs> got some spies over on the other side. Yeah, right. Way to, you know, pair your grapefruit with some spies and espionage, you know. All right, let's go out on one last ad here. DC Douglas Plain. DC7. And what's going to happen in a couple weeks? Life unplanned then did an article about the airline disaster. Yeah. So they planned out this article. It comes out in May 1956, but then they scrambled to put together an article for the airline disaster. So wow. that, we're going to take a look at that next time. Ooh. Looking forward to it. Yeah. I had fun chatting with my friends about this Life magazine article, yet I was left a little unsatisfied. See, I wanted to talk a little more about this natural bridge in the Grand Canyon and a little less about Larry the Cable Guy. So I hopped onto a message board for other Grand Canyon nerds like myself. These are some images from the 1955 issue of Arizona Highways that show how Goldwater went to the arch. So Ranger Haley did confirm that Goldwater spotted it from the air in 1951, and he hiked to it in 1954, and he was the one to call it Kolb Arch. He named it after the Kolb brothers. Goldwater wanted it at that time, and I think still there isn't any other thing named for the Kolb brothers. So Goldwater wanted to honor them, Emery and Ellsworth Kolb. And, and also worth noting, this isn't all that far off from Rainbow Natural Bridge. Yet this is, yet this Kolb arch is believed to be the largest natural bridge in the Grand Canyon. Now, even, even more interesting here, after Goldwater visited the arch, Harvey Butchert did go with his friend Boyd Moore, and they were the first to visit the bridge after, um, you know, we, we had news about this discovery or rediscovery. And on that trip, Harvey Butchert's friend, Boyd Moore, drowned in the Colorado River the next day. Grand Canyon TV